You might think Leah Mowat would be owed a debt of gratitude for bringing an online child sex predator to justice. Instead, the 34-year-old's life has been torn apart. The night I found out what was going on, everything changed forever. The reason is as simple as it is shocking. The predator was her own partner. Fifteen men have been arrested in raids across the child porn Australia crimes have sickened even the most experienced senior police. 65 Australians, including a priest and a school teacher. Hundreds of thousands of images. Leah is one of a growing number of women who are discovering to their horror that they married a monster. A suburban house home to unspeakable horrors. A partner living a sick double life, secretly viewing and getting their kicks from child sex abuse material. Do you think about the children that were in those images? Yeah, I have. And that's, I think that's something we all need to think about. Things happen to these children that you would never dream of. And he was looking at that stuff. If you achieve sexual gratification from viewing the image of a child being sexually abused, it cannot be such a quantum leap that you wouldn't take your online sexual fantasies into the real world. Where is this? Um, that was at a friend's birthday. And um, it was not long after we first met. You look happy then? Yeah, I was. Why so? Because it was new love. Leah was 25 when she met Philip Velio through an online dating site. He was an IT professional at a nearby university and the two hit it off straight away. I remember he was funny and he made me laugh and he was kind and I believed he was a good person. How long are you with him? Uh, almost six years. Long time? Yeah, a good chunk of my life. Oh, good boy. Sit, sit, sit. The pair bought a house together and settled down. Philip's passions were computers and cars. He would take part in online forums, trading parts and seeking advice, but his online persona had a far uglier side. How could I be with someone for that long and not know? Um, but at the end of the day, there was really nothing that would tell me what he was really doing. Not anywhere not anywhere in the relationship. By late 2014, the couple seemed to be drifting apart. Leah had her suspicions. Did you suspect he was cheating on you? Uh, only towards the end. And I am, um, I guess, thinking that we met online. Maybe I'll find something online about what he's up to. Leah searched his profile name, and one of the results linked him to a pornography website. She clicked on it and found herself in a dark corner of the internet filled with depraved images and videos. But it's what Philip had uploaded himself that was truly disturbing. I immediately saw that he had uploaded pictures from people's Facebooks including myself, uh, a friend, and the friend's daughter. How old was the friend's daughter? She was 15 at the time, but some of the pictures were when she was a lot younger. The photos had sexually explicit or suggestive comments underneath. They included 
a picture of two young girls in bikinis. What he'd written underneath this photo told me what the reality was. That reality destroyed my world in a, in a second. And I knew that quite quickly after I saw what I saw, the police had to be called. Leah had barely scratched the surface of her partner's twisted online obsession. Police seized his laptops and iPad and found more than 32,000 images and 854 videos. Many showed teenagers, toddlers and even babies in sickening sexual acts. Convicted on two counts of possessing child abuse material, Philip Velio received a 12-month good behaviour bond. I think what upsets me most is that, like, he says, well, maybe I've, I've stopped him, but... <sighs> who's, who's helping these kids? because there are so many others like Philip out there. He had hundreds and hundreds of videos and thousands of images. How many kids is that? It's bad enough, Peter, that um, women find out that their husbands have used online child abuse material. But that's just the start of the problems that they have to face. The grief, the turmoil, the distress, the ongoing trauma that they've suffered has been horrific. Not just to begin with, but ongoing. Absolutely. Dr Marg Liddell from Melbourne's RMIT University is the author of a world-first study of women like Leah. Partners who are stigmatised by a crime that is no fault of their own. The common thread is the despair. How did I end up with this man um, who is looking at these images and doesn't understand, you know, the horrific child sexual abuse that's behind it? And, and how did she not pick it up? That's right. How did she not know? And that's just the beginning. That's uh, absolutely, that's the beginning. Then comes the isolation. That's right, that's right. The loss of friendships. Yes, it's a kind of a snowballing trauma. It's really extreme. They are the forgotten victims. Very much, very much the forgotten victims. And that's, I think, what we have to change. So I lost everything, um, the house, the car, I had to be sold, I had to move. Your whole world had collapsed. Yep. How often did you think, what have I done to deserve this? Oh, lots of times. I thought over and over and over again, why am I being punished for doing the right thing? Two years on, Leah is finally starting to rebuild her life. Much of that is down to Natalie Walker, who is on a mission to empower those forgotten victims of this unspeakable crime. If there was no one just looking at child abuse material, there would be no children being raped and videoed. It's 15 years since Natalie found out her then partner's awful secret. A friend who serviced his computer stumbled on a collection of explicit images of children. Our mutual friends rallied around him. Around him? Around him. Um, not you? Not me. They tried to protect him from me to a degree because I was ruining his life by speaking out um, about this. Shocked by the lack of help, Natalie set out to make a difference. In 2013, she founded Partnerspeak, 
the first support group of its kind. Instead of being a victim, instead of being someone that's looked down upon and isolated and crushed, they're someone that has something to offer someone else. And women who don't think they're very far along in their recovery are then reaching out and helping someone else. And that's really powerful. For Detective Inspector John Rouse of Queensland Police, every day is a lesson in depravity. So okay. he, he puts a new album on there virtually every day. Yeah. Um, seems to have access to quite a few different kids. The head of the world-renowned Child Protection Squad, Task Force Argos, says it's impossible to know how many men are viewing child sex abuse material, but the number of arrests has risen dramatically. The internet uh, has so many opportunities for people to communicate, utilising peer-to-peer, bulletin boards, email, applications. It's endless the way that they do it. What is it that could possibly turn someone on when looking at these depraved images? It's beyond me. You know, um, people are wired differently. You know, um, but you've got to understand this isn't a disease or a sickness or an illness that you know it, that you catch. It's a predetermined sexual disposition to sexually abuse a child. And we will put every last breath we can into trying to stop it happening. Symbols that was in a lot of the fabrics. Leah hopes by coming forward, she too will make a difference, easing the stigma faced by women like her. It takes great courage to tell her story but it's a sign of just how far she's come. I think if you've proved anything, it's that you're a survivor. Do you feel that way? Despite everything, I never gave up. And I did the right thing. That's all it is. I did the right thing. What is your message for anyone who might be in your shoes? They're not alone and what they're feeling is okay and normal. And it's not their fault. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.